Hello everybody and welcome. Hello my darlings. How is everybody doing today? This is what we're going to be painting today. dandelions and bees. I'm just going to prep a palette real fast for that. It should just be yellow, green, and orange for me. Hello, Moon. And welcome. Let's see here. Put some white. Hey, Kestrel and Red Lorraine and Meg Olson. Hello. I think all I need is green and yellow and orange. And just a tiny bit of brown. to my gouache to get it to be really smooth. I'd rather build it up than um, plop it on. Hello Fern, welcome! And I'm going to do a little bit of yellow with white. Orange. 
And there we go. I think we can go with that. Hello, Jen. Welcome, everybody. I'm trying to move all my things off that I was using earlier to make the, the drawing. Let's see, I can put my coffee here and that's just under my face. That works. Since I have orange on here, I think I'm just gonna do all the little bits that are gonna be orange. since that happens to be on my brush. I might have to do a little bit of a darker orange. The camera doesn't quite pick it up exactly as I see it. See, the camera almost is showing that as um, as yellow, but it is an orangey color. And I might put a little darker orange in there. Oh, before we got started, I wanted to show you last month's um, card that came from the painting, because it was changed a little bit and I wanted to kind of share. Let's see, let's do that first before we get too far into this. So this was our original painting and you can see there's four flowers on it and uh, of the pink, the large pink ones. And then as I was painting this down here, I decided I didn't like the, uh, the, uh, the nest. So I was showing you guys that I was gonna put a totally different nest in. So this is how the nest came out on the branch. And then once I got it all situated in Photoshop, I decided to add um, I don't think we had all the black lines and the white lines added, so all those got added later. And then um, I decided that there needed to be more of these pink flowers. So in Photoshop, I did a little bit of switching around. And this is what we ended up with. If you're a pen pal patron, you already have received your card. But you can see that in the final version, there are five, oh, six, six pink flowers. And um, the branch is the other direction. I decided to go with swapping it the other direction. And just a little bit of uh, zhuzhing on some of the things. So it came out quite differently. And I wanted to share. Isa's here, hello, welcome. So let's get back to what we're doing today. I was gonna grab a little bit more orange paint. That was a darker orange. Let's see if I can do that. Let's see, I like this one. That will be nice. Do I need to grab a little bit of a lighter green while I'm here? Why not? Since I have this open. There we go, now we'll have more to work with. That was loud. Sorry, sorry. So this is our palette now. It's brown, orange, yellow, and several greens. Okay. 
Okay, let's get going. I'm going to fill in some big spaces first. I was looking at some, um, I actually just stumbled across a video the other day, a couple days ago, and it was a study with me video where somebody was just studying for an exam and they filmed themselves studying using the Pomodoro method, which is a certain number of minutes on task and then a certain number of minutes as a break. And in this case, it was 50 minutes on and 10 minutes off each hour, and it was a four hour video. So you could study along with this person for four hours, four, four sessions on and four breaks. And it just had some relaxing music and um, It was just very calming and it was, there was a little bit of uh, background sounds in the background too. So I enjoyed it and I thought I would definitely be willing to make some, um, you know, craft with me, art with me, draw with me, study with me, read with me, some kind of little similar thing, but for witchy activities so that would give me an opportunity and a reason to you know, get some chores done and uh, still be making content for you guys at the same time. But I wasn't sure how popular that would be. It's, I think it's becoming more and more popular to have like a body doubling content so that whatever you're doing around the house, you have somebody kind of doing it with you almost. I've seen videos for people who um, were doing body doubling for laundry or um, washing the dishes or cleaning the house. I think it's a really interesting thing to explore for content. We're going to build up these uh, flowers over time and they're going to be mostly yellow but I wanted to start with orange at the center so it, the centers look a little darker. I thought it might be fun to do as you know um, videos that have been uploaded as opposed to live streams because live streams you have to um, you know show up at a certain time and the person who's hosting the stream has to talk. So it's more interactive and chit chat and I get to find out about you guys and how your day was and what you're up to. But this would be something different. It would be more like um, pre-recorded and you could tune in any time that's convenient. I think I might do a few. It will give me accountability too because there's a lot of things that I want to do that I haven't stuck to my plans. And if I feel like I'm doing it as content, then I might be a little bit more accountable to myself. Lisa says, oh, I love the card. Mike says, well done. I love the vibrancy of the flowers and the bunnies. I wish the bunnies had popped out a little bit more. In, in my eye, they looked like they were going to pop off the uh, canvas a little bit more than they actually did when it was finally printed. 
but that's a good learning um, situation for me because when I have the cards printed, I want to make sure that everything looks looks right. Red Lorraine says, oh, I would blank with you, craft with me, read with me, study with me. Hey, Zany, how are you? Hello, Palapon. Body, uh, Issa says, body doubling is huge in the neurodiverse community, and I do it daily with my son when he's doing schoolwork. I think a witchy body doubling video would be lovely. Kestrel says, I enjoy live streams, but also pre-recorded stuff is fun too. Jen says, I use body doubling at work and, in, and at home. It's a great way to work. Helpful Naturals here. Hello. You get all the aminals fed. And just laying down all of our base layers here. I'm learning to work with gouache as we go. It's one of those things where it's the opposite of watercolor. You go dark first instead of light first. Oops, sorry, I keep hitting the microphone. I'm going to move my paint a little closer so I, well, I'm still going to be going around the microphone, but maybe I'll hit it less. I just think it would be a fun way to make content and it gives me a chance to do a lot of the chores that I feel like I need to do that I haven't found time to do. So anyway, that gives you a little bit of an idea of how I kind of zhuzh up the cards in Photoshop, and a little bit of the before and after uh, behind the scenes. So when I make a mistake and I say I'm gonna fix that in post, you know what I'm talking about. I feel like I've started with too large of a brush. Might swap out my brush. Helpful says, yes, I fed all my cats. Oh no, I lost my dog last week on Monday, still learning to cope without him. It was sudden. Oh, I'm so sorry. That's the worst. Not being able to plan or see it coming.
Lisa says, is your deck all planned out or are the cards coming to you individually? I have a general idea of some of the cards that I want to do. But as I draw them, they completely change. This was not at all the original idea. In fact, I think I have the old drawing around here somewhere. Not sure if I could put my hand on it right at the moment, but um, some of the elements stayed, but some of them totally changed. Lisa says, oh, helpful. I'm so very sorry to read that. Sending you oceans of love and comfort. Oh yeah, we all are. Losing a pet is, it's so hard. That's the only drawback is they go too soon. They go sooner than us usually. Swap it around. I've said this before, but um, I was trying to do the whole goddess um, series straight up and down so it didn't look upside down for anybody during the live stream. But for the oracle cards, I'm going to be swip swapping it around so that I have ease of painting rather than trying to make it straight for the camera. So the cards are going to go every which way. I went to my P.O. box and got a bunch of pen pal letters out of the P.O. box and I realized that they had I had let them uh, go for too long and then I had several from the same people. <laughs> so if you have been sending me letters, I am so sorry that I let it go so long to visit my P.O. box, but I have visited now and thank you all for anything you have sent me. This yellow is too green. Once it hits the black background, it just looks really green. So I think I'm going to be mixing it with something warmer. Patience, let it dry, let it dry. Let's get in there with um, some of the darker brown color on the bee bodies. So I'm gonna make my bees brown in, instead of black and, and yellow because the background is black. So I'm gonna start with a little bit of a brown wash. just to indicate where the areas are.
I don't know if I like the legs being brown. Maybe I'll change the color. Well, I can always do that later. says, I'm sorry to hear this. Sending a hug your way. And Red Lorraine says, they really are family. Oh, 100%. My kitties are my children. And no one's going to talk me out of that. Hopeful says, thank you, Meg. He was our big baby boy. All 120 pounds of him. Oh my goodness. Josie, welcome. Oh, all the little tiny seeds, yes, that as well. see if I can get some green started here. I think I'm going to go with kind of the darker green first and then work up to a lighter green for some highlights. Lorraine says, I'm letting my dandelions and my potted plants be this year so the bees have the earliest food source. I planted some balsam for the bees and hummingbirds all up and down the stairs to my apartment. I can't wait till they come up. We've had so much rain that my dandelions are just starting to pop in the yard. And my lavender has um, bloomed and um, my rosemary has bloomed. I'm going to zoom in a little bit because it's teeny tiny. Harlow, hello, Harlow, welcome. My mom and I are going to try to grow some cucumbers and echinacea flowers this year. I'm begging her to let me get a greenhouse. Wow. You guys must have some space. Do you guys ever look at houses on Zillow? 
and just kind of daydream and imagine yourself moving into one of them. Asking for a friend. I may or may not have done that the other day and found a beautiful house with a greenhouse attached. And I thought to myself, I could reenact practical magic because I love that movie. And I especially love the little greenhouse area where they grow all their, their herbs. Meg says, my rosemary plant bloomed as well, thanks to the rain. Everything looks a bit unkempt, but to be fair, I like the look of it. Harlow, report back your results. Let me know if you can get echinacea to grow, because I have tried, and we are just... I think we've just got too much dry drought. Though not this year, we were, we've been rained out at this point, but I feel like it's been too dry in the past to get echinacea to grow. But it is so good for you. It makes a tea that is wonderful if you have a cold or a flu. So I wanted it to grow. Red Lorraine says, if you do that, I'm moving in. Well, it was a house, I think, in, gosh, I think it was New Mexico or Utah or someplace like that. Sometimes you just have to go on Zillow and goof around. Just dream the impossible dream. Like if I won the lottery, Harla says, I found a really good greenhouse on Amazon. It's six by 12. That's a decent size. Issa says, it, I live in a New York City apartment that gets zero sunlight, which hurts my witchy Taurus heart. So I'm always slightly envious of those who have space and sun to grow things. Meanwhile, people are watching uh, bloggers show their day all around New York and wishing they could go there. Everybody wants the thing that the other people have. imagination it's something like living in a city where there's not eight million people and everybody trying to do everything on the freeway lines for everything crowded beaches in the summer but of course if I moved somewhere where there were no crowds 
there would probably be nothing to do and I wouldn't know what to do with myself. So it's always a give and take. Echinacea is also a really good flower that aligns with Jupiter or Pluto. Asprock is here. Hello! Jen says, we have echinacea growing in ditches, but I can't get it to grow in my yard. Oh my goodness. Oh, off camera. Here we go. Back on the camera. Is anybody else doing an art or craft project while they're watching the live stream? I'd love to know if people are arting along with me or crafting along with me. And if you're watching this later after it's a video on YouTube, you could just leave the answer in the comments because I read all of my comments. Let me know what your current craft project is. I'm pretty excited for the craft kit this month. I'm trying to get it out onto Etsy and get uh, the all my patrons um, a message about what it is, but I have not had time to get it get it up. So it's going to be another couple of days. But hopefully everybody will like it because it's a floral crown like with spring flowers that you could wear to Ren Fair or for a Beltane ritual or just around the house if you want to pretend to be a fairy. April is the month that uh, we have Ren Fair here in Southern California, so I thought a little spring flower crown would be perfect. Brooke says, I'm new here. Welcome. Working on knitting a pair of hand warmers. Oh, yeah. Issa says, oh, I love living in New York City. I've lived here my whole life. I just wish I could grow things as well. Harla says, we're going to put ours in pots and we're using seed starters. As Brock is crocheting a five-star blanket. What's a five-star blanket? I'll have to look that up after the stream. I'll have to Google that. Let's flip-flop. I'm crocheting a blanket this year. It's my uh, 2024, one of my 2024 um, resolutions or whatever you want to call them, goals for the year that I posted in January. And I, it's going to be for a California king. It's going to cover an entire California king. So I don't know how long it's going to take me. It might take me the whole year because I only work on it in the evenings and I don't work it on, on it every night. Um, I only work on it when I'm motivated because I'm trying to do not magic while I'm crocheting or while I'm crocheting portions of it and adding intention and magic into the actual crochet portion. But the last time I went to visit my family and uh, did a road trip to Arizona, I brought it along with me because I could bring it. I wasn't in the plane. I wasn't on a plane, so I could bring it in the car. And I'm glad I did, too, because my mom helped me change the design a little bit before I got too far into it to make it a better, a better design.
Oh, this is really coming out good. It's coming slow, but it's coming out good. Red Lorraine says, I just finished designing four variations of print ads. So yes, I'm creating alongside you. Carlos says, I am winding my embroidery floss on bobbins while I listen to this. I considered making an embroidery project also as a kit for this month in case people didn't want a floral crown. But I didn't finish the design in time, so maybe next month. Everything just gets pushed off if I run out of time. not a no it's just a not right now I wanted to do a little amulet bag that could be um, on a like a one of those kind of large um, not quite a safety pin but it's like the kind of safety pin you would use to hold a kilt I guess that is a safety pin but it's you know that uh, kind of bronze larger style I'm still in the middle of designing it. I want it to be a pouch or an amulet to hold uh, crystals or petitions or something like that, but also make it wearable. I'm always thinking my thoughts. Pelopon says, first time I'm on your live. Welcome, welcome. We do a live stream on the first Wednesday of every month. And that's this one. That's the art live stream. And we're painting cards that are eventually going to become an Oracle card deck. And then on the third Wednesday of every month, we have a crafting live stream. And then on the last Friday of every month, we have a plan with me for the, for the next month, for the upcoming month. So we have three live streams every month. And also we're learning gouache because I've never used it before and I decided to use it for my Oracle cards. I've been kind of looking at videos on using gouache and watching some artists use it and I just kind of really got intrigued and interested in the way it comes out. Jen says, I am knitting for a friend. I was thinking about doing some um, projects, one a month or something like that, to come up with small little handmade gifts for the holidays. We usually have a gift exchange um, where we draw names, so I don't need a lot of gifts, but I was thinking about having, hosting a, um, a gift game session where you have to do little, have little, um, challenges and games to win prizes so I was thinking about trying to get the prizes together throughout the year so I don't have to struggle at the end of the year trying to come up with something we don't usually uh, do holiday games for prizes or anything like that but I my family loves to play games together and uh, do I think that would be right up our alley
I definitely wouldn't have to twist anybody's arm to agree to that one. <laughs> Ooh, I'm really liking how this is coming out. We barely got anything in and it's already looking cool. Lisa says, I tend not to do anything when I join your live streams. I find it super relaxing to just watch you and chat. says cucumber grows surprisingly well in pots I've done it before really I would not have guessed that I assume that cucumbers would grow something like watermelon but that's just coming just I have no basis in knowledge I just was guessing like lying on the ground. Helpful says, I grow all of my herbs and tomatoes in pots despite having a large yard. Yeah, that sounds good. I mean, that sounds like, you know, gives you control. Hmm. That leaf came out a little funky, but that's okay. We can always fix it in post. And of course, this is just the first layer of green. This is just the dark layer, and we're gonna go in with some lighter highlights later. Give it some dimension. Sprock says, I got the five-star crochet pattern from the YouTube channel, The Crochet Crowd. It's for a baby blanket, but I just kept going. <laughs> I see. So it's something that was supposed to end up smaller, but if you just keep going around and around, it gets bigger and bigger. I wish I could knit. I have never learned. It's something that's on my list to learn but I don't know when I would have time. So it would be down the road, but I do crochet because I find crochet to be, I, I only crochet in a very simple way so that I don't have to pay too much attention and then I can do it while I'm doing other things. So I've never learned any complicated crochet things, just, just the most simple of them. But I was actually thinking about, because that's the way, one of the ways I do not magic is in crochet. I crochet the intention into the garment or into the blanket or into the item. And uh, I thought maybe I would do some simple, extremely simple crochet uh, videos next year. And make them witchy. Ooh, that leaf came out good. 
You went till it was queen size. See, I'm going for California King. It's taking gonna take me all year. But I'm gonna do a granny. I'm doing not granny squares, I'm doing granny stripes. And that could be a bodily, um, if I could speak words, that could be one of the body doubling videos that I do. It's a crochet with me where I just crochet and then we do the Pomodoro. I don't know what you guys think. 50 minutes on, 10 minutes off, or 25 minutes on, five minutes off um, Pomodoro. What is the preferred? Is 50 too many? Maybe I should do um, different ones for different topics. If you're just getting here and you weren't here at the very beginning, um, I'm talking about maybe doing some content where I have either a study with me or a read with me or a crochet with me. And I, I would just call it witch with me because it could be anything. But it's kind of the body doubling idea of uh, having a study section or a reading session where you have the video on and it goes for a certain amount of time and then there's a break and then it continues on. I can't believe I only just discovered these videos. Everybody's, everybody in the comments was like, oh, I use those. I'm just now, I'm just now uh, finding out about them and I love, I've been using the one I discovered. I've been using it every day for two days now since I found it two days ago. So I really like it. So that led me to thinking I should do this content for my channel. You should crochet for a live stream sometime. Yeah, maybe that'll be what I do um, in 2025 for my live streams. Instead of making it video content, we could do crochet content for the crafting streams. I don't know, that seems really, really specific though. I think that only crocheters would tune in and then I would lose a bunch of people. So I like to keep my crafts, um, I like to keep changing it up because some people like painting and some people like hot glue guns and wreaths and some people like embroidery and I don't think I could do the same thing every time. The art ones I can, but the crafting ones I like to switch it up. Oh my goodness, I missed so much chat. What's happening? Let me, let me scroll, scroll back up. I missed Helpful Natural. Jane, hello, welcome. Did I miss anything up here? Okay. Helpful says, I love bees. Last summer I hung a small bee house behind my herb garden. No residence yet. You know what? I don't have any residence in my bee house yet either. I think it's been too rainy. And too warm because my bee house is for overwintering and I don't think our winter got cold enough. Helpful or Issa says it's nice to be still and and just be isn't it? Yeah you don't have to be doing a project. I just was wondering if anybody was. Okay I'm gonna do the stem all the way up and then I'm gonna cover over it with the the little seeds. So this will be in the background. There we go. Helpful says, I had back surgery a couple of years ago, so no more bending or lifting. My pots are all on the table and small pedestals. I had uh, surgery a few years back as well and most of the things that I have in the bottom cupboards 
are things that I don't ever use, or if I do, it's extremely rare. I got real used to asking for help. Oh my goodness, I'm gonna to have to really get in there with a tiny one for this. But I don't wanna make my details too tiny because this is going to be reduced down into a playing card size. So I can't make things too teeny tiny because then it'll reduce down to nothing. So. I probably should keep my details pretty big. Brooke says, oh, hello, Brooke. Brooke says, I use looms. It's a great way to learn your way around the different stitches. I've even been able to adapt cabling on a sock loom for stockings. Oh. I tried knitting about 20 years ago, but being left-handed, it was difficult to find instruction for lefties. Well, that will be a trouble for me too. I really like the crocheting channels where they do it for right-handed and then they flip their footage um, and then they just put out another video for lefties. Because you know you can literally flip your footage in whatever editing program you're using and um, re-export your video and you've got two videos for one. And the lefties are happy. And it guarantees you that you're gonna get views from that 20% of the population if you take the time. Brooke says, I was able to teach my lefty daughter how to knit with a loom despite being right-handed myself. Yeah, you just look at um, somebody straight on as opposed to sitting beside them. Brooke says, I'd love to learn more about knot magic to incorporate in knitting. I think I'm going to do a whole series on knot magic because you can use it in knitting and crochet. You can use it in weaving. You can use it in embroidery, sewing. You can use it to make, just to make things that are made out of twine or string. I love this card and how it's coming out. I think once we start with the white gel pens, which is the last step, it's just gonna pop like crazy. Not trying, I'm trying not to get too ahead of myself, but I'm excited. Carla says, Brooke, I use looms too. It makes it so much easier. Okay, now I'm, now I'm way behind. Carla says, I'd love to see you do more incense blends. I loved your llamas one. Thank you. I've been trying to do one a year. I did a Yule one um, this year. Or I should say in 2023, I did a Yule one in December. 
and uh, there is a litha one summer solstice one that's out i think where's that oil i think that might be an oil blend But I am going to do a little uh, video or course on how to make incense um, for loose incense and the cone incense that you can use in the backflow incense burner so that the smoke goes down because that is super cool. I love that. Ever since I got one of those incense burners, that's what I use. I just need to clone myself and get myself more time as well. Let's see, what do I need to do? Some stems, I can do that straight up and down. Helpful says, I used to sew a lot and now I want to get back into it, especially restyling thrift shop clothes. Stevie Scarlet is here. I'm so late. Oh no, you're fine. Helpful says, a lot of rain here in Wisconsin too. We dodged a bullet last night and only got rain instead of eight inches of snow. It was almost 80 here today. I think it was 76 maybe. This is coming out so good. I, I know I keep saying that I sound like a broken record, but I'm really happy with it. And you don't hear me say that a lot on my art streams. So just let me have this, okay? You know I'm joking. Hello to Stevie. T. Thomas is here. Greetings. Do you all have plans for the solar eclipse? I was just going to ask you guys that. Yes. I'm going to do a big old new moon ritual. Reset all those intentions. Lock them in for the rest of the year. I need all the help I can get. I'm going to use all that energy. Send your love my way. I got all sorts of secret plans going on in the background too, you guys. I can't tell you. Shouldn't have I've already said too much. Red Lorraine says you could plant bee specific flowers near it and that might tempt them to come. And Helpful says, good idea. I bought several packets of wildflower seeds to plant this year. Oh, in Wisconsin, you might not see the eclipse. Yeah, it's going to be more like the southern Midwest. Is that, do I understand that correctly? Okay, I'm going to flip this. Flip it. I think this might be the last of the green and then we can get some more yellow going. Oops, sorry, sorry, sorry. Ew, 
Okay. Is that all the green? I think I got it all. We're going to go with it. We're going to say yes. Let's do the last of the brown as well. Let's go in with the brown and one more time. Zoom in maybe a little bit. Carlo says, there's a solar eclipse event going on at my local science center where you can view it and do some activities. It's also on my friend's birthday, so we're all hoping to hang out. Oh, that sounds fun. I love to go to the science center in my town. We have a really, we have a really good one in Balboa Park. I actually just love to go to Balboa Park whether I go to a science center or not. I just love that place. I should actually go visit soon. I haven't been in a hot minute. But I accidentally went to Disneyland on Monday with a friend. Kind of an unplanned trip. I should say, not this Monday, but last Monday. It was an unplanned trip, but I ended up buying one of those uh, Southern California passes so you can go multiple times. It's three, it allows you to go three different times if you go within a certain time period. So I got the, the three ticket one. And so I'm going to go again on April 10th, two days after the eclipse. Add a little bit of orange to my brown. Let's see if I can't make the little brown ones that go down here. There we go. Oh, I'm off the I'm off the camera because I zoomed in. I forgot. My bad. KTC, first time catching your live stream. How about selling DIY candle spell kits? Oh, that's a good idea. I wonder if people would, I wouldn't want to have to mail glass. I did have a spell, I mean, a, a DIY kit in February that didn't sell because um, it was so heavy that the shipping was so expensive. I don't think anybody um, bought, the, bought the kit because of the price. Because I had to increase the price for the shipping. So I would be worried about mailing glass, but. I wonder if people would want a kit that has everything but the container. No, people wouldn't. People would want the container. Carlos says, I'll be in Ohio. I'm in Ohio, so I'll be able to see it fairly well. I do love making up candle spell kits, though. I mean, spell uh, candle spells and uh, recipes for candles. Oh, I just love that stuff. 
That's why I think I have 24 spell candle recipes videos on my channel. <laughs> I did it for like two years. Let's get a little bit more brown done and then we'll call it. We'll get going with some of our brighter yellows. Isa says, I had an aunt who was ambidextrous because she was a lefty, but in Catholic schools in the 50s and 60s, that was considered the hand of the devil. So they made her learn to write with her right hand. I remember being forced to use right-handed scissors as a child in school. It was not the 50s or 60s, but I remember that. Ever since they stopped forcing kids to be right-handed, there have there's a higher percentage of left-handed people in the world all of a sudden, like magic. We were always there. Yeah, since the medieval times, the left hand uh, direction has been the sinister direction. And that's why they say baneful magic is called the left hand path. I still am not sold on the arms and legs on the bees being brown. So we'll see. We'll see if it stays that way. Okay, we're gonna get in there with the lighter yellows now. See, I need to start mixing some of these babies up because my paint is all dried out. So this lighter yellow almost looks weirdly green when it's on the black background. So I'm going to move some of this orange in as well to kind of warm it up if I can. Let's see if I can get this. The thing with gouache is it, it uh, definitely gets dry out and hard pretty fast. But the good thing about it is it's always refixable with water, so that's nice. says, I grew up in the 60s and was punished by my kindergarten teacher for using my left hand. It was brutal. Jen says, my mind works like a slide carousel, so it's hard to stay on task and focus. I have found that when I'm making all the things I sit still. I even have a little pillow on my, on my uh, living room, in my living room on my couch that says, make all the things. I love it. And of course it's a handmade pillow. <laughs> T. Thomas says, I love your candle video. Thank you so much. I love making them. I stopped making them this year though, because uh, two years was enough of that. 
I might go back to it because I've got some molds for making pillar candles, which I've never tried. I've always done them in containers, but I might want to start learning pillar candles. But that would have to be next year because this year is already filled up with ideas. Oh, I love it. I love the way these are coming out. Flip it. Meg says, I'm left-handed and I had a church school teacher threaten to break my hand once. Needless to say, my parents didn't let me go back to that class. That person should be fired. That should go on their permanent record. guys remember when that was a uh, threat the teachers would make the stuff would go on your permanent record that's hilarious if you think about it now It's starting to really look like dandelions. Lisa says, yes, demonizing the left hand is a very old practice. The irony is that we came from a family which is from centuries back. I'm going to add a little bit of orange to warm this up again because we need more yellow and more orange and more water. Let's see if I can fix this up a little bit. I don't always like to use the paintbrush that I'm using to do the mixing. I usually like to use a paintbrush that's kind of older and has um, not as good of bristles for the mixing. But I'm on stream and I'm lazy right now, so. Mickey's here. Hello, welcome. 
Lorraine's, Red Lorraine says, in keeping with my health goal, I'm off for a short walk around the block. Be back to see you guys soon. Remember the Mr. Marco microphone commercial back in the day that said, I'll be back to pick you up later. <laughs> Can you imagine? They made that commercial today. It'll be canceled. one didn't quite come out as good but I think I can fix it if I just mess around in this general area a little bit T. Thomas says this is turning out gorgeous oh I'm so happy with how it's turning out like that and now I need to do the yellow on the bees I almost forgot the bees says not to make light of what was done to you but what when I saw what you wrote I immediately thought of Abby Normal from Young Frankenstein and now I'm singing putting on the Ritz I hope you're singing it a little bit better than he did do a couple of coats of this yellow to make it stand out the way I want it to but I think we're getting there Mickey says Amy your oracle card is looking awesome hello and thank you I really like this one I think that the, the solution is use, uh, as I'm learning as I'm going, using colors that pop on the black and using a very limited color palette and not trying to do all of the things. It's really helping. And also, I'm just learning um, gouache as I go, and so each time I do a painting, I feel like I'm learning a little bit more on how to do it. Like having the patience to let this yellow dry before I try to put more yellow over it.
Mickey says, I saw my first dandelion of the season in my yard yesterday. I was so happy. Yes, ours are just popping up. We have the really tiny versions. And they will get large and then they will get impossibly large. I'm trying to get the dandelions in every stage of their uh, their life on one card, if I can. Is it time to start in with some of the white? Or should I actually work on some of this lighter green a little bit and see how that's going to work? Hmm, maybe I don't like the lighter green. Maybe I want to go in with black. Not sure that I dig that. And if I do go in with any highlights, maybe I want to use white instead. Hmm. I'm going to say no on that. As soon as I started, I didn't really like it. Cover that right back up. Heather Smith, hello, welcome. You're not late. Okay, so I'm gonna give my little um, talk that I gave on Friday about white pens, because I know a lot of people like to know this stuff. And I have been through the ringer on white pens. so. If you're gonna buy white gel pens, buy Uniball Signo. These are the best ones as far as like, they will always write. Maybe a second choice is gonna be the Sarasa. And then my last choice is the Jelly Roll because these dry, these don't have the same roller ball. Like the roller doesn't roll as smoothly, but I do buy them because you can get different sizes like the 10 and the five. So the only reason I ended up with these was because I really wanted like fine and fine tip and really thick tip. But I really, really like, this one is my number one, Uniball Signo. Lisa says, such a great movie. Madeline Kahn is one of my all-time favorite. Oh, I love Madeline Kahn. I love her in, well, so many things that I really like her in Clue and The History of the World Part 1. Carolyn's here. Hello. Welcome. Hello. I feel as though it's been a year and a day since I saw you live. I keep your best at painting on my altar. Thank you. Meg's got to go. Bye, Meg. Helpful says, way back in 2009, my husband and I did characters from Blazing Saddles for Halloween. <laughs> Made Lily Von Stroop's costume from her singing scene. I still have the picture of Madeline on my wall. Oh. Mickey says, good call on that light green. Did, did you mean covering it up or not using it? I hope.
my husband dressed as Mongo and acted the part and he ended up winning the grand prize. <laughs> yeah, for sure when you can really commit to the commit to that bit. Okay, I just said that these pens would write. Okay. I have a fan going. I don't know if you guys can hear that on on the mic. But it's drying out the paint and the and the pen pretty quickly. I think Clue has got to be in my probably top 10 or at least top 20 favorite movies of all time. Oh, I'm glad you guys can't hear the fan. I was a little bit worried about that being annoying as a sound, but not worried enough to turn it off, obviously. Flames, flames on the side of my face, which I, I quote that line so often. Definitely one of the best. Brooke says, I have to go. It's been wonderful chatting, hoping to tune in more in the future. And you can always watch the replay if you don't tune in on time. It's not a big deal. No pressure. But I leave the replays up forever. Mongo only pawn in game of life. Stevie Scarlet is here. Hello. Stevie says, I love Clue. I've watched it at least 50 times. So funny and smart. Love the set they used. goodness sorry guys I forgot it was uh oh my goodness my card is full okay well thank you for telling me that can we erase that from the screen oh I might have to go dark for a second you guys I'll be right back I have to change my card
I'm back. Oh, sorry about that, you guys. I forgot that I was um, I was using that. Uh, I was using the camera and I was recording the drawing of this uh, piece of art before the stream came on. So it was already filled with that much time. And remember, this is going to be shrunk down so that these, uh, these white lines have to be quite bold or else they'll start to fade away in the um, final version on the card because the card is only going to be two and a half inches. I forgot that I need to put little brown uh, seed pods onto each one of these lines. So I'll be coming back in with the brown. Did anybody get the name of the white pen that Amy likes best? Amy got it. It is called Uniball Signo. I think it's from Korea. I personally like a 0.7, but it's a pretty thick line. So, you know, that's a personal. Heather said, Amy, are you making a deck? I missed what you said you were doing with this. Yes, I am making an Oracle card deck that's all um, uh, original artwork. And then I might use a smaller pen to do, to do the little wing, um, the wing inclusions. Let's see if I can. Sometimes these pens, right, and sometimes they don't. That's why I don't like them.
Elviry, am I saying that right? Hello and welcome. Ooh, I like this so much. I think I should go in with some black and delineate some of these um, petals. And should I go in with black on the, the leaves? Let me see what it looks like. I'm gonna find my black pins. You see, I am actually looking at some pictures of the leaves and such over here to the side. So I'm kind of looking at these little guys to see what things look like. I don't want to add too many details. Maybe I'll just leave the center line because like I said, these guys are going to be shrunk down really small so any tiny details will come be completely lost so I think maybe just a, a black line works for me and then a lot of this white edging here where I didn't quite hit exactly the leaves that I had drawn um, that kind of stuff is going to get erased because that was white pencil so that won't be there. Okay, what did I miss? Maybe some black detailing on these bees. Or should the should the little arms and legs be brown or do we think that they should be white? No, that's that would be weird, right? Not sure about the bees. brown seed pods that I forgot. Oh, I love it. 
Let's zoom out a little bit more. There we go. My goodness. What does the bee need? I feel like the bee is like, the wings are so bright and the bee is so dark. Or maybe the bee's okay and the wings are a little too much. Maybe the wings need to be like, hmm, hmm. I have some pictures of bees that I was looking at. Where are those? Let's look at them. Here's some pictures of bees. I guess, I guess that's right. Maybe the body, maybe the wings are not above the body. Maybe the wings are out to the side of the body. And I just kind of like, boop, how about that? Instead of the wings being on the top like that. Highlight the bees' bodies. Yes, helpful. We don't really have a, a, like a, a source of light on this but we can always paint over it if we hate it what do we think does this help I think that the, I think that they should, the bee thing should go out. I'll have to fix that in post. Does that help or does that hurt? What do you guys think? I mean, should I highlight the all the way around? I don't know. Ink is here, hey! Yes, is here, hello! So I think if I cover up these original ones and make them a little bit more out, they look a little bit more, I don't know, cute? Heather says, amazing, I have to go back and watch the other live paintings. Oh, please don't. They were a struggle bus. This is the first one that's come out really good. Just just watch from here on out. <laughs> I'm learning each time. The, the very first one in January, I literally threw the, the painting away in the trash. It was bad. Dust of pollen on the legs, yes. That's the answer. You guys are so smart. Always ask chat. Chat knows the answer. Let's see. Pollen dust incoming. They always carry it on their legs too. Always have a big, oops, too much water. Too much water? Stop. Okay, let's try that again. Let's see here. They are always covered in big old things of pollen on their footies. This card is going to be called Wishes.
The good thing about this is that you can always fix it in Photoshop if you don't like it. You can fix it later. <laughs> How cute is this? <laughs> Anita, hey! Everybody's here! Helpful says, the pic you showed of the bees had a highlight in the center to show the bulbous nature of each body segment. Oh yeah, but we're not using, we're not using this kind of paint. So like this is a, almost like a photographic rendering of, yeah. I'm, I'm doing more of a, the gouache is more, You can do this as a darker yellow and then use a pop of white or a pop of yellow that's lighter right in the center. Remember, this is going to be about one third of the size you see it once it goes onto the, um, the greeting card or no, the um, playing card, the oracle card. So I can't get too detailed or it just falls apart. But here's an example of the size difference. I'll show you real quick. <laughs> I love this card. So this is an example of the one we did last month. This is the greeting card that it becomes. You can kind of see how it loses um, some of its size. And then the Oracle card will be the size of a playing card, which is a little, this won't, it won't be halved again, but it will be almost halved again. So. This is four by six and a playing card is two and a half by three and a half. So you can kind of see how the details will start to go away. So we got to have these big chunky white bits so that it'll, it'll stay. Neil says, I made a five minute yarn craft today. I made one of my rats a tug of war toy she's not sure of. Did you use braiding? Bye, Inca. Today has been a really long, crappy day. I'm going to leave. Oh, I'm sorry you had a terrible day. But I'm glad you popped in to say hey. And Oneida came, and Heather is here, and who else did I miss? Anybody? Hello to anybody who just joined us. Oh, the Empress Goth is here. Hello. So you got here just in time for us to be finishing up. We've been streaming for one hour, 58 minutes, and 28 seconds. Did you guys notice that there is a... Um, little time thing here under the word hello boop as long as I can remember to turn that on we'll have a little uptime um, counter to let you know how long the stream's been going I like it but what do you think of of the uh, splitting of not having the wings on top Maybe I should look at an actual photograph of a bee. But I'm happy with what we did today. I'm excited about it. And thank you guys for joining me too. And when I get it into Photoshop, I'll start taking out all the little erasures and little funny things that happened and judging it all up and it should be good. And this will be the pen pal card for the month. So if you want to receive a pen pal card, you can sign up on my Patreon below the stream.
And also you guys, I'm sending out a newsletter tomorrow. It's a little bit late, it's supposed to come out at the beginning of the month and just haven't had time to get the kit together. But once I get the kit up, I'm going to um, announce it in the newsletter and to all my patrons. So you guys will be the first to know. So if you are not subscribed to the newsletter, please subscribe to the newsletter down below. There's links to everything, Patreon, newsletter, any of the stuff. And every once in a while, yes, I am going to have my face on the stream. It's uh, not every single time, only when I have the chance to, uh, you know, do my hair and face and all that stuff. But, yep. So I have two options, one with and without the face. So you never know what you're going to get when you tune in. Thank you guys so much for being with me. And I hope you will join me for the crafting live stream, which is the third Wednesday of the month, which is going to be... April 17th, 4 p.m. Pacific time, and we are going to be crafting a spring floral crown. So I hope you'll join me for that. And thanks again for watching, and have a great night, and have a great new moon, and have a great eclipse. And I'll see you on the flippity flop.